Hello everyone, I'm Matthew Allen and welcome back to the What A Thought Podcast, episode 20. Wow. Guys, that is so many. You know how many that is? That's a lot. <laughs> it's, for, for a podcast, it is a lot. To, since it comes out once a week, it's, ooh, keeping up with it is difficult, but I'm getting it done. And I think that's what counts. <laughs> that is definitely what counts. Um, before I really dive into this horribly not <laughs> serious at all topic, I will instead dive into an incredibly serious topic. Um, I'm not a person that likes politics. I don't. I'm only registered to a political party so that I can vote in um, the early voting stuff where you can choose who represents the political parties. Which, in case you didn't know, you have to be registered to a political party to do that portion of the vote. Which is stupid. And is the only reason I'm registered to a political party. Won't tell you which one, because I could care less about both sides. I just vote for the person that I think is the best representative. Anywho, that's not the politics I'm getting into. I just wanted to say that, because I know if I mention politics just as a word, people will jump to that form of politics. So I, would, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, instead, I'm going to talk about the stuff real quick. Russia, Ukraine, all that's going on. As of recording this, uh, it's a couple of days earlier than I would normally record. You know, normally you get the day before it comes out, uh, which would give you the most up-to-date version of, of info. So, so much could change in the next five days. Um, but Russia invaded Ukraine. That is insane. Not one of the things I thought I'd witness, like in my lifetime. Now granted, I was born into us being over in the Middle East and all that other fun jazz, but somehow that one didn't really hit as hard as this one currently is, even though we aren't directly involved in this one, but if we are, it could get so much worse. Um, and it's just, it's a weird time out there. It is, it is a weird time. Uh, obviously, my podcast, my rules, I tend to bring up funnier things, um, but I'll occasionally I will bring up more serious things, like the Rust incident that happened way back at like the beginning of uh, me starting this podcast, uh, for those that don't remember that one. Um, but I just wanted to, to put it out there, like, choices have been made in the world, things that we couldn't influence. I'm not Vladimir Putin. I couldn't, couldn't change his mind if I wanted to. He's doing his own thing. Uh, and we as the world are getting to witness it and in us witnessing it. Uh, we're really just, uh, we're getting to know people. It's very, it's very interesting. Uh, it's a very interesting time. I hope for the safety of all the people in Ukraine because uh, it appears that no one is being spared and who is being hurt over there. It is not just military men and like, political officials that are being sent after it's just if you're you in ukraine you're you're in the way uh which is horrible it's terrible it's an awful thing uh so i just wanted to briefly start with that rather than close with that because uh i just wanted to put that out there in the minds of the people you know when you think about things and and look back on the past and like to the future and gotta remember moments like this do come up it's inevitable. If we lived in a utopia, there would be nothing special. And that is the thing I think people don't really get when it comes to the idea of a utopia, is that if you're in a utopia, nothing is special. No one is special. You are all the same. There are no differences. Blah, 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 blah. And that's awful. It's so boring. People would lose their minds. Yeah, we're losing our minds now. There's so many terrible, awful things happening. I'm not saying like, Oh, there's nothing bad happening. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I'll leave that to Alex Jones. Uh, I'm just saying that this is what's occurring. I'm just going to briefly, you know, bring it up. Be like, I think it's stupid. Uh, I think I think it is stupid beyond a doubt. <laughs> uh, and I, it, But, of course, I can't think it's just stupid anymore because it, it has occurred. Like, when it was in that moment of like, oh, is this actually going to happen? I was kind of just like, yeah, no, 
I doubt it. That's dumb. Now it's happening, and I have to look at it and be like, well, this is so stupid and dumb, and I think there are people that are in a lot of danger, and there are probably people that might end up in more danger if it is prolonged. I know last I read <laughs> in my brief moments of keeping up with it that uh, Ukraine is applying to join the EU, which is like the collective <laughs> of of all the like British countries, uh, which was a very interesting choice because essentially it would kind of force the EU to actively help Ukraine if they like accept the application of them joining. Like it would force them to physically send not just aid but probably like military people to help against Russia. Which, hey guys, I think it's really funny for this to start and Ukraine be like, hey, can we join the EU <laughs> right now, please? Um, which is a terrible thing to laugh about. <laughs> but it's just what it is. What it is. Uh, and hopefully that goes over well. Hopefully it doesn't spread any further, uh, like the fighting and, and whatnot. Uh, so here's the hoping. Now I'll go into a less serious but still more, like, tone-sensitive topic, uh, and then it'll get more degraded from there. Uh, healthy relationship weight gain. Yeah, what a goddamn jump. Well, yeah, there's an invasion in Ukraine. Let's talk about healthy relationship weight gain. Because uh, you see all of the, like, memes, right? You see all the jokes where people are like, one year after we started dating, like, they'll be like, this is us when we started dating, and it'll, they'll, two of them are, like, stick thin or whatever. It'll be like, a year after we started dating. And, like, they're both, like, a little larger. That You can tell that they, you know, in, they eat. You know, they've gained some healthy relationship weight. But, like, no one's ever talked about how bad that before part is. And I understand that without, like, explaining, that seems like it doesn't make any sense. So give me 30 seconds to drink water, <laughs> and then I'll explain. Because I don't know what my throat is doing. Excuse me. So, everyone always talks about healthy relationship weight gain. You know, you're in a healthy relationship, everything is stable. People tend to gain a couple of pounds. But no one ever talks about the fact that the implication of there being healthy relationship weight gain implies... <laughs> Sorry, there's someone singing somewhere in this building. Um, <laughs> there's somewhere. I don't know where. It's just through the walls. And it's very goofy because like it's not bad. But because I don't have context for what's happening, it's, just, it's wild. Um, anyways... Uh, no one ever talks about the fact that people are actively putting themselves in position of, like, unhealthy weights and, like, low low food intake in order to present themselves as looking even better to a, uh, to a potential mate, you know, to make it sound like I'm a scientist talking about wolves. Um, <laughs> they They will purposely do the thing where they just don't eat and, like, they'll make themselves, quote unquote, look pretty. In order to, like, you know, draw someone in. And then over the course of their healthy, like, relationship, they'll just kind of gain a bit of weight as they get more comfortable with, like, eating, like, properly. You know, like regular people <laughs> and whatnot. And I think that's a, a terrible thing to do to yourself. You shouldn't have to force yourself to, like, eat less and, uh, like, eat an unhealthily amount of, like, less food. And, like, do a bunch of crap in order to make yourself look better to pull someone in. And then once you're like, oh, yeah, I can, this is the person. Then you can start to, like, eat regularly and gain a bit of weight. Because no one ever talks about that aspect. They're always like, oh, yeah, we gained, like, you know, she gained some, like, healthy relationship weight because she was dating a good dude for seven years or whatever. Like, hey, why didn't she just have that from the get-go? He's still here. He would have still been there. It, it. I feel like it, it, society has placed this weird ideal of, like, <laughs> like a, a weird entrapment, almost. You know, like a, like a weird, weird form of entrapment, where it's like, 
aha, look at this person that you that that you started dating, and now years later, look at them, and they're a bit heavier, and you know they feel healthy and they feel comfortable with you, and it's like why couldn't they feel healthy and comfortable without you? They shouldn't have to feel any other way except healthy and comfortable. Like, come on now. I don't know. It's just it's always so weird to me because I never I never thought about it. I wasn't was not often in long like long long extended like relationships in in my adult life, which is very short right now. It's still in its early stages, uh, in which I had the opportunity to really spend a lot of time with someone and like take them out and do stuff like that before just be like, hey, you want to go drive around or come <laughs> see my high school theater show or shit like that. Um, but it really got me thinking. I was like, yeah, we never, we never talk about the fact that we, we position it as this idea of like, they're in a healthy relationship. So they feel comfortable like eating regularly and thus putting on a bit more weight, but it's never sanctioned <laughs> in talks of like, well, why is this considered healthy weight gain because of a healthy relationship, which would imply that the weight beforehand was a little more unhealthy. Now, granted, not everyone goes through that same thing. Some people might not gain that much. Some people might be, I don't know, bodybuilders, and it just all goes to their muscles or something like. But the idea is like it's never it's never questioned beyond the core belief of like you've gained a bit of weight because you're in a healthy relationship and you feel comfortable with this person no matter how you look. You should always feel comfortable with your significant other no matter how you look, but you shouldn't force yourself to look. To, to, you shouldn't force yourself into a zone of uncomfortability so that you look even better to someone before you get to know them. You know, does that make sense? This has been a weird five minutes of me trying to explain my thoughts on, like, healthy relationship weight gain. And now I'm responding to a text. Because, you know. Things like that happen. Uh, you respond to text and you just have to you have to stop talking for a bit. And then you drink more water because you're just a thirsty, thirsty... Me I've been drinking so much water, guys. This is going to be my segue uh, out of healthy relationship weight gain. Which, hey, you gain weight? Cool. As long as you're comfortable in how you are, don't give a shit what anyone else thinks. Like, me personally, as, as I was about to talk about with all the water I've been drinking, like, I've been doing muscle building exercises you know i've been gaining more muscle back in my arms because i lost a good chunk of it when covid started like i had i had enough where it was viable and usable much more easily and like i lost a lot of it <laughs> and now i'm trying to gain it back because i want that back but i also want to tone down so i've been making my own personal changes because that's just what i want to do right i'm not uncomfortable with how i am currently i could be perfectly like if i did not change I would be fine, but I want to change of my own volition, not because I'm trying to, like, pull in the ladies. No, <laughs> don't do that. But, uh, yeah, I've been drinking a lot more water, and, uh, man, let me tell you, there's nothing better than, than doing push-ups and crunches and squats and then just having a nice big cup of water there, and you're not supposed to drink too much of it because then, like, your tummy will just be filled with water while you exercise, and that's not fun, having that just slosh around. Not not good while you're exercising, but it it sure is helpful. <laughs> Water is good, man. The amount of people, <laughs> the amount of people when I stream, I stream. Hey, if you don't know, I stream uh, Fridays, Saturdays. Uh, the last ones were when this goes up would have been Thursday, Friday instead because hey, it's it's spring break. <laughs> it's spring break. That is a terrible joke that no one is going to get except for for Ryan. Hey, Ryan, if you're listening to my podcast, I hope you know that that was indeed a reference to the movie The Mutilator. <laughs> now, you may be wondering, what does me saying spring break in a fun tone have anything to do with a horror movie called The Mutilator? which I will explain to everyone else that isn't Ryan who doesn't listen to this podcast. I'll tell you. <laughs> that movie was not originally called The Mutilator. It was called Fall Break. So far along, in fact, was it called Fall Break that the title card 
in the movie says fall break and not the mutilator. And that's so funny to me. It's so funny to me. Can you imagine picking up a ticket to go see the mutilator in some sleazy, like, 19, I don't know, 1970s, 1980s? It's one of those two. Uh, <laughs> theater, right? To see this B-horror movie. And you're like, oh, I can't wait to see The Mutilator. I can't wait to see see what it brings to the screen. I'm so excited. And then, like, it, the movie starts, and you get hit with a title card that says, Fall Break? Huh? You'd be so lost. You'd be like, hey, projectionist, you're playing the wrong reel, right? Because this is before the internet, okay? You couldn't just Google it to learn, like, oh, yeah, it was called fall break until too far in production it already had a title card and then they changed it to the mutilator like no okay you'd have to listen to the neckbeard selling you popcorn to get that information okay and that would require you to go out into the main lobby of the theater and ask said neckbeard for more popcorn and information but that would be so funny we wouldn't no one does that to movies anymore even even b movies that come out are so in their own butts about how they exist that they would never willingly go through a, a, a faked a, like an act not a faked but like an accidental title switch so late in production that you have to keep the in movie title card that's so hilarious that's so funny and yeah no fall break spring break two different things but it was still so funny to me just <laughs> every time i've been thinking about spring break recently i just hear it in that tone in that Fall break like that tone oh that's so goofy and also the worst title for a horror film like come on now the mutilator at least you're like okay i know what i'm getting into this one the movie was just called fall break huh what is someone supposed to what knowledge would you garner from that title like oh yeah it's fall break like what yeah what does that mean dude <laughs> What am I supposed to get from that? Am I getting ghosts? Am I getting demons? Is there a, is there a murderer like a slasher? Is he immortal like like Michael Myers before the retcons? Like what what what's happening, you dude? But instead, instead we got the mutilator. Now, no offense to the title of mutilator, um, and to the movie the mutilator, but I will be stealing the title Fall Break for something. Probably a podcast episode. Uh, later on in the year uh, or possibly I'll just go make a horror movie that's just centered around fall break which is not what we call it <laughs> which hold on let me google it real quick if I were to just google right fall break I just get a bunch of stuff about like breaks in like colleges but i don't think we we call it fall break <laughs> we do call it fall break oh that's interesting no way i've learned something new who's calling it fall break what old person is <laughs> writing this up what does that say <laughs> oh never mind I managed to find the one for my my school, and it says, fall break, no longer offered. And that's hilarious. So you're in, what I'm being informed is not that we don't call it that anymore, but that we don't have that. I'm going to assume that like spring break, there used to be a break in the middle of the fall semester called fall break in order to give students, like, you know, a time to recoup. But someone out there, some goddamn chuckle fuck, was like, oh, they have Thanksgiving break. They don't need this. No. Hey, people who run schools, can I tell you something? There's nothing stupid. Stupider. Sorry. There's nothing stupider. Right? There's nothing stupider than the Thanksgiving break. Okay? Absolutely nothing stupider than it. And you can't convince me otherwise. Nothing stupider than Thanksgiving break. And I'm going to explain. 
Thanksgiving break. You leave school for a week. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm back with family. This is nice. I'm relaxing. I'm not focused on work. Except you are. I don't know who's out there thinking we're not focused on work during the Thanksgiving break, okay? I don't know who is, but we are. You know why? Because then we come back for a week and a half to do final exams. Do you know what a momentum-busting movement that is? Here's 14 or 13, whatever, weeks, right, of school. And now here is a full week off where you go off and do whatever you want and now come back and take your finals and then go home again what why are we going home again (laughs) you know how wild that is disappear for a week come back for two more weeks and then go back home for a month no just (laughs) pick one let me finish it up and push another week onto my month away from school or don't or just let me power through it Start the week, start the semester a week later, and then still give me my month off in between semesters, and just don't give me Thanksgiving break. And there's a lot of students and families out there that would, would contest this idea. They'll be like, hey, excuse me, I didn't mean to burp that hard. They're like, hey, I need that break, okay? I need that time to relax, and like they're jittering off of their 14th pot of coffee, and like, I don't know, seven different types of, of uh, not Tylenol, uh, Xanax, <laughs> right? It's just the euphoria high, kids. Haven't watched the show. I just know there's lots of drugs in it. But um, I'm telling you right now, to those people that would contest this statement, you know for a fact, okay? You know for a fat fact <laughs> that you would do so much better at finishing out the semester if you, A, had a break that wasn't the week before your finals, and or B, just didn't have that break. Hey, I'd be all for bringing back your fall break. <laughs> it's so funny to me. I hope that doesn't get copyrighted uh, since I'm saying it. <laughs> if I was to find it and play the noise. Um, you know you'd 100% be like, yeah, I'll take <laughs> no break and just power through the semester. If it meant you didn't have to be- deal with the tomfoolery that is how finals is placed right after thanksgiving break i'm sure i'm sure your mom would be upset okay that you can't come and eat turkey with her okay or that you can't bake a pumpkin pie in the oven and by that bake it i mean you heat it up after you bought it in your local Publix or schnucks or whatever okay but you'd be you wouldn't realize it okay because you know what most people do during thanksgiving break they exist in a world of stress about finals they don't even enjoy the break they're just like i'm about to eat a lot of food today and it's the one day i'm not gonna study and then they go and study afterwards they're like actually i I can't afford to not study today so i'm gonna i'm gonna study like dude come on man we're better than this we're supposed to be better than this as a collective as a society Just <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix starts rolling out. He's like, we live in a society. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. I'd actually be very concerned if Joaquin Phoenix just kind of appeared. I wouldn't I wouldn't want him to stay in here. No, sir. <laughs> that, 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 would, that would be terrifying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's... It's not good. The reason people like spring break so much is that it's literally the middle of the semester. You've gone through, you've done your midterms, and now you get a break. And then you come back and you essentially start over again as you work towards your final. And that works out so well because of where it's placed. It's the middle of the semester. This, right now, this is being recorded in week eight. Semesters are 16 weeks. It is going up in spring break. So it's it's been eight weeks. There's a spring break, and then there are eight more weeks. Pretty certain. Or there's seven. It's one of those two. But either way, that math works out so much better for the mind because now you can, like, rest a little bit. You're like, okay, I got through the midterms. It's all good. I can use this time to relax or have fun and, like, snort cocaine, like whatever the, the white people on yachts in Florida Ocean do, okay? Do as you do. 
<laughs> but like the Thanksgiving break is so not good. <laughs> It's like, here's 14 weeks of work, uh, and your finals are in two weeks, but uh, right here, between me telling you, your fi- reminding you that your finals are in two weeks, and you taking your finals, uh, go enjoy some turkey. See if you can get some good deals this Black Friday. Like, no, it's so unnecessarily stressful. Also, Black Friday, stupid. So dumb. So, so dumb. <laughs> Not gonna get into that. We'll get back, we'll get into that. In November. <laughs> As for right now, no. I'm just focused on the Thanksgiving break, the spring break, that we should bring back fall break. Uh, especially if it's, if it's like in the middle of the semester again. Like if fall break falls in the middle of the semester, you know, you eight weeks, do your midterms, and then a break. I'd much rather have that. And so would everyone else. I'm sure the whole United States college system, like students, would majority vote to switch from Thanksgiving break to just a fall break that happened in the middle of the semester, like how spring break does. It would be so much better. So much better. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? When would that fall? Let's see, August, September. So sometime in October, right? Correct? <laughs> it, you would get through through August, right? And you'd get through September, and your midterms would be somewhere in the midst of, of October. You know how cool that would be to have a week off in October? can go do October things, like visit a pumpkin patch. Who does that anymore? I'd like to visit a pumpkin patch. I don't have the time, because I'm always here <laughs> doing classes. <laughs> I could go home, visit Halloween Horror Nights like a real, <laughs> like a real gangster. <laughs> I can't tell you how bad I want to go to Halloween Horror Nights and have just not had the ability to because I'm doing college, not in Florida. Or California. But I can tell you right here, right now, if I was, I'd go to Halloween Horror Nights. That stuff looks so fun. I've, I've been once. Um, I went once. It was for my birthday in middle school. I went with my, my sister and her... I don't remember what he was at the time. He's her husband. Now. He He's her husband now. Yes, that sentence was correct. Um, I don't believe they were married at the time yet. Or maybe they were. I do not remember. Um, and we did two houses, and then they got tired, and so we had to leave. Do you know how disappointing that was to me? It wasn't even good houses. That was that was the year of, of uh, American Werewolf in London, and then um, one of we went into one of their generic houses. So those were the two, only two houses I got to go into. And then they were like, we're tired. And I was like, you're what? I was like, no. And I have not been able to go back since. That's running on six, seven, seven years now I've been trying to get back. That's ridiculous. That's kind of sad. Don't don't think about that too hard. You might realize that I live a sad life. <laughs> I don't live a sad life. I'm the happiest man you've ever seen while never seeing me. <laughs> oh, I swear I'm so funny. <laughs> uh, what else is in here? I'm going to hold off on that, on those two. I need to, I actually have to do research for one of these podcast episodes, um, on two really big and incredibly heavy topics. Um, and I just have not had the chance to do that. So I might do some of that research during spring break and, um, then deliver it to you, uh, two weeks later, which would be cool. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it would be interesting to see a properly researched, uh, podcast episode rather than like researched during the episode like if it's a funny topic like with with um dildo newfoundland which i love to bring that one back up because it's just so fun it's so funny um if it's like a funny topic like that i don't mind researching and learning (laughs) in the moment because i think it's a lot funnier for you guys but for a more serious like or touchy subject i'd like to do some research beforehand research wow research beforehand like uh like i did with rust So I will instead, (laughs) I'll close this out a little early by talking about something that that entered my brain and I didn't know what to do with it. And I'm just going to read for you word for word what was written in my notes, uh, which says, Did the MCU lead directly to the rise in furries and anime kids being more, in quotation marks, accepted in society? (laughs) That's a loaded sentence. That gun is loaded. 
<laughs> um, it is it is a loaded that is loaded. That is a loaded statement. What the hell do I mean by that? Well, here, I'll tell you. So the MCU, all right? Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's all of the Marvel movies that have been coming out, okay? You've got your your Iron Mans and your Spider Mans and your Thors and your Caps and whatever. Uh, those started with the release of the first Iron Man movie in 2008. Now, if you go back even to just like 2011 and earlier, comic book movies, anime, stuff like that, you were a joke. You were a joke if you if you were into those things. If you were a nerd, you lived in your mother's basement and you wore a robe and you played Dungeons and Dragons. That was the consensus. That's what you looked like. I didn't wear a robe and I didn't have a basement. I did play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> no, I played Pokemon as a kid in that moment in time. Let that sink in. Um, no, but I felt personally that with the rise in popularity of such big namestay things, such as like the MCU, and then subsequently every other comic book movie and show that has like come out since then, uh, has led to a larger acceptance of the nerdier folk uh but has also then led to the to the rise and willing to put themselves in the public view of other folk uh which would be the furries <laughs> so i i believe because you know it even back when i was in middle school anime kids dog you got clowned on if you were an anime kid you were clowned on so hard the only thing that kept me from getting clowned on as an anime kid, because I did watch anime in middle school, um, <laughs> the only thing that kept me from getting clowned on is the fact that I didn't like to talk to people. I was quiet, and I was reserved, and <laughs> for some godforsaken reason, wore a bright orange traffic, like traffic cone orange jacket. Zip up jacket, went over my, like it was big, it was huge, it was so orange, you could not miss me. You were like, yup. That's Matthew <laughs> from across the school. Like, it was so bright and orange. But that was the flashiest thing about me. No one else knew my existence. I just I just was existing. I did. I did exist. Now I'm here making a podcast. But um, that was the only thing that saved me. I knew other people. I'm, I'm great friends. I've had my, my friend, uh, my friend Jade came on uh, to do games with me last uh, summer uh, and uh words and i'm working on a, a project with her yo she was the biggest anime kid hey jade i'm so sorry if you're gonna learn this through this podcast but like everyone thought you were weird they did but if you were to put that version of jade because she's way different now if you were to put that version of jade from middle school into like a current middle school setting dude she'd have one of the biggest friend groups People are so publicly just accepting of like, oh my god, you like anime? And like, there are more and more anime movies coming into theaters. Like, it blows my brain. Every time I see like one just with its poster up, I'm like, huh? And like, it isn't a Studio Ghibli movie. Because everyone loves Studio Ghibli. And don't say you don't, because you've probably seen Howl's Moving Castle. Because they played it on Cartoon Network a lot when the English dub came out. They played that movie so much. That one, and, and Ponyo... And I think, not The Secret World of Arietti. That's not them. Uh, my Neighbor Totoro. Literally everyone knows what Totoro looks like, even if they've never seen the movie. They see that big raccoon thing, and they go, yeah, that's Totoro. Or they'll be like, oh, I know that, even if they don't know his name. Like, those images have gotten around in popularity. But, like, yeah. <laughs> it's only in, like, modern times where I see people being like, oh, have you seen the new... I don't, I don't know, like, the, One Piece is at a thousand episodes, and, like, uh, Hunter x Hunter is better than Fairy Tale, and, like, Jojo Bizarre's Adventure is very gay, and, like, just things like that, and I'm just like, how do you, what? Huh? I'm, I'm here, like, I, I hear you, but I have no clue what you're saying, and I'm surprised you're saying it this loudly, and then I think about it, and I'm like, wow, people just kind of, <laughs> they're just really like, yeah, it is what it is, what are you gonna do about it? punk and i'm just there like Ugh. like like running away like no stay in secrecy oh man the amount of articles i've seen like even in <laughs> even in high school i had a friend uh his grandmother printed out articles about like 
things that occurred when people played Dungeons and Dragons, like murders and stuff, to try and like scare him into not playing. And we we sat and read them, and like a lot of them had like there was no connection. It was just a bunch of people trying to make Dungeons and Dragons seem like the occult. And my favorite one was that this sounds terrible because you know it was an actual thing. It was like a, a woman was murdered by uh, two people, and like two houses away was a group of teens playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and we looked at that and we were like, are they trying to connect these people who weren't even connected to what occurred? To what occurred? Like, it wasn't like, oh, this guy plays Dungeons and Dragons and he murdered someone. Like, no, it was literally just, yeah, uh, Steven and Jeff murdered Stacy and two houses away... Um, a bunch of nerds from the AV club were playing Dungeons and Dragons. We think that they used spells to command Jeff and whatever I just said his fake name was to kill Stacy. Like, dude, what? <laughs> it's like those those people don't even know each other. Jeff and what's his name weren't even from that town. Like, it was so goofy. Just stop shit like that. That's how it was up until like 2008. And then there was a shift. Okay. And it was slow. It was real slow, but the peak of the shift came in 2012 when the Avengers came out, right? That was the moment where everything flipped, okay? Because suddenly comic book movies were doing really good. And because they were doing good, people were like, oh, we kind of like comics. So then they started to grapple into comics. And then from the comics, they were like, oh, you know what's kind of like comics? Manga. And you know what manga is adapted into? Anime. And so they slowly just involved all of this together and like let it rise and now people are less in their basements and more in their coffee shops talking about these things but we gave them too much power because then the furries came in now hey i don't hate furries but i don't like them if you want to exist in your home and like put on a two thousand dollar essentially mascot right like you're putting on a mascot costume if that's what you want to do, just, I don't, I don't care. Just don't involve me, okay? But I just can't, I don't, I don't know what it is, but public spaces make me feel so uncomfortable if there's a furry. Which sounds so awful, but I don't care. This is my podcast. I can say what I want. Y'all want to go, if you have a convention, sure, I will walk the other way. If I'm walking through, like, a Walmart, and there's someone with, like, dog ears on their head and a tail poking out of their asshole while wearing their walmart vest because they're on the they're on the clock so they couldn't wear the full thing like guys like come on come on please stop stop get some help i just no (laughs) calm down don't wear that to walmart okay don't wear that anywhere else except in your home and at conventions Hey, I like to cosplay. I've got a Nick Fury outfit that I've put together myself over the course of five years. I think that's really cool. You don't see me wearing that everywhere. Because I look a bit like a mass murderer if I do. Okay? If someone didn't have the context for who Nick Fury was, I would look like I was about to pull the scene from The Matrix where Neo and Trinity walk into the building. (laughs) If you know the scene, you know the scene. That's what it looks like. (laughs) <laughs> except less leathery <laughs> um, and so I, I know when is the right time and when isn't if I'm going to go to a con- like if I were to go to a convention like a real proper convention I would wear that I would 100% because it was a like comic book convention sure if I was going to go attend a Monday morning class I would not wear that because every student would feel uncomfortable and that is how we feel about you guys. So I blame the MCU for making other things popular enough for people to accept them that other people with things that we didn't want to accept stepped forward and said, hey, can you accept this too? And like they put their finger up and they were like, teacher, teacher, can you let me wear my, my ears, uwu? I, I, I'm a I'm a wolf. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I almost threw up saying that. Uh, this is such a mean thing to end off on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end off on that. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is what I'm going to end off on. Please stop wearing your stuff in public if it's what you want to do at home. I don't care. If you want to go make eggs in your kitchen, 
as a wolf. I couldn't care less, dude. You're in your house. And someone's going to come at me, right? I can hear it now. Someone's going to come at me in the same vein of like, this is exactly how people felt about like the gays and, and whatnot. And I'm like, no, it's not. Because it's not the same. You wanting to wear your mascot costume into the Walmart is very different from Jeff wanting to marry Dave. <laughs> They're not the same, okay? They're not the same in any way, shape, or form. Jeff should be able to marry Dave. I'm glad that Jeff can marry Dave. But you, random name I can't think of to give you, uh, you, Nate, Wanting to wear your Yif Yif costume into the Walmart? Not the same thing. Not the same fight. I'm glad that you support Jeff and Dave uh, for wanting to get married. Uh, but I hope you understand that Jeff and Dave are not supporting you, Nate, in your Yif Yif Walmart adventure. Okay? <laughs> they hate that you're their roommate. <laughs> Anyways... Thank you for listening to the What A Thought Podcast. <laughs> if you have any comments or if you have any topics you want to hear me talk about, make sure to leave those down in the comment section. Or if you feel that it's a more serious one that you don't want to just put into the comments, uh, shoot me a message over on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, you can find all of that in the link tree down in the description, uh, where you can also find the links to my other YouTube channel where I play games and to my Twitch where I stream on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, it's spring break. If you're listening to this, uh, when it comes out and before, you know, Friday, Saturday, spring break, I'm not streaming this week. I'm working. I'm, I'm trying to earn some money. Um, you know, that way I can afford to then upgrade some equipment, uh, like get a webcam, webcam, face cam. That makes it sound less like porn. (laughs) Uh, so thank you guys again. I've been Matthew Allen. This has been the What A Thought Podcast, episode 20. Enjoy your spring breaks if you're on spring break. If you're not on spring break, I hope you enjoyed your spring break. Or I hope you are looking forward to your spring break because none of these are aligned, even though they could easily be aligned. But holy shit, can you imagine? Can you imagine every person in school in America went on spring break at the same time? Chaos. It would be chaos, but I'd love it. I want to see it. Give me that movie. Give me the movie about the five teens delayed in the airport because there's just been massive outcries of teens on planes causing havoc. Anyways, (laughs) have a good day.